Geronimo Stilton, get ready! It was time for the opening ceremony. All the athletes paraded into the stadium, waving their country's flags. The mice in the stands applauded them. Then it was time for the competition to begin. The loud squeaker blasted, Geronimo Stilton, get ready on the tatami. Shorty tired squeezed my paw. I know you're ready for this, Geronimo. Remember to concentrate on your Kokoro. I gave her paw a squeeze, then approached the tatami. But just as I was about to step out, my paws got stuck between the mats. Second call for Geronimo Stilton, the loud squeak of blood. Uh-oh, I tried yanking my paw out. I pulled it every which way, but my paw was ju- just wouldn't move. It was as if I were caught in a mouse trap. Ouch! Come on, Geronimo! I heard Shorty yell. You will be eliminated after the third call. I pulled and I pushed and heaved as hard as I could, but nothing happened. I couldn't get unstuck. Geronimo Stilton, this is your third and final call, the loudspeaker boomed. I was near tears. Was it possible I would lose the championship because of a trapped paw? Just when I was about to give up, pop, my paw popped out of the mat. I scurried over the to tummy as quickly as I could. Moshi Champarat, Geronimo. Go, Cheesehead, go! I stepped onto the tatami. Immediately, a tomb-like silence fell over the stadium. Every eye was on me, a Geronimo Stilton, a mouse who had known nothing about karate just one week ago. I tried not to let it get on get to me. On the opposite side of the tatami, my opponent stepped out. It was Maoshi Champarat. He was a very tough looking mouse. A wave of nausea crashed over me. I could feel my fur turning green. Then I thought of Shorty Tyle's words. The secret is to always do your best. The silence was very mounting. It was a very, very tense moment. Then, woohoo! Startled, I looked up. The, looked up at the stands. Bruce was sitting in the front row, blasting on a plat. Trumpet. You can do it, Cheesehead, he shouted. Show him what you are made of. He waved a big banner in the air. Go, Cheesehead, go. I was mortified, but I wasn't surprised. Things like this happen when you have a friend like Bruce. The referee scampered over to me. Excuse me, are you Geronimo Stilton or Cheesehead? Our roster shows this match is between Moshi Champrat and Geronimo Stilton. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton, I said with as much confidence as I could muster. I am ready. The referee walked away. He looked unconvinced. He whispered something to the judges. They all turned to look at me suspiciously. I tried to put that out of my mind. At last, it was time for my first match. Hiya! The crowd began clapping their paws and 
stamping the ground. They made so much noise it seemed as if the arena would collapse. Mashi, Champrat and I began studying each other after we did our race. We were each trying to figure out what kind of opponent the other was. Then Champrat began a rapid combination of attack. Fist, kick, fist, fist. It looked like a massive ball of muscle was coming right at me. I had no plan of counterattack, only flight. I began to race around the tatami, determined not to let Champarat catch up. Run, run, run! Champarat started to get annoyed. I swear, I saw smoke coming out of his nostrils. He looked angrier than a cat with a bad case of fleas. Champarat tried to hit me with another combinations of attack side kick fist but i was too fast for him champarat was big tall and covered with muscles but he was a lot slower than i was suddenly i remembered my secret move it was time to use it i began concentrating really hard then I started running even faster than before. As I picked up speed, I leaped into the air and made a powerful jumping front foot reverse roundhouse kick. This was an ancient and extremely secret move since Yamama had taught me. As I kicked, I yelled, hi ya Suddenly, there was an explosion of blinding flashes. I lost my balance and did a backward somersault. I landed on Champrat, knocking him over. Then there was a moment of silence. Then the crowd began to applaud like crazy. I stumbled to my paws and began to Massage my tail. Moldy mozzarella. That hurt. But Champarat was KO'd. That is knocked out. I scurried over to him. Champarat, are you okay? Did I hurt you? I'm sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. The flashes made me lose my balance. Champarat just looked up at me and said, You're, you're. You're amazing. I have never seen such a move. I'm honored to have lost to an athlete of such capable and experience. The loudspeaker announced, Geronimo Stilton is the winner of the World Championship. Wait, what? What do they mean, World Championship? Shorty Tai and Sensei Yamama ran towards me with open paws. Geronimo! You won! You're phenomenal, Shorty Squeak. Did I really win? I asked incredulously. Didn't you hear the announcement earlier, Shorty asked? The pilgrim backed out because of a pulled muscle. The Italian dislocated a knee. And the Chinese athlete slipped in the lo- in the locker room, hit his head, and lost his memory. Poor thing, he couldn't remember a single karate move. So you and Champarat were the only ones in your event left, and you beat him. I was in shock. I hugged Shorty. The crowd kept on cheering. Bruce was frantically waving in the bleachers. I waved back. I couldn't believe it. I was the world champion. 
Thousand Tails Proudly Wag. The competition continued. I was glad my match was so early in the day. Now I could relax and enjoy the rest of the tournament. Many other athletes from Mouse Island performed well. Shorty, Daniela, and Miga all successfully defended their titles in the female events. At the end of the day, it was time for the medal ceremony. The podium was very high and brightly lit. All the athletes formed a line. I shook Champrat's paw. Then I heard loud squeakers announce in the winners in my event. In third place, Fernandian Nauskos from the Philippines. The athlete stepped onto the third podium. In second place, now she Champarat from Japan. Champarat took his place on the second step on the podium. And in first place, a new world champion, Geronimo Dutton from Mouse Island. I scampered up to my place on the highest step on the podium. I was very excited. The crowd was cheering and calling our names. Photo- photographers were taking thousands of photos, gazing out at the stands. I saw my family, my sister Thea, my cousin Trap, and my adorable nephew Benjamin were all beaming with pride as they cheered for me. What a fabby mouse surprise! After the medals were given, there was a moment of silence. Then the Mouse Island's national anthem came over the loudspeaker. It was very moving and I felt so proud to represent my country, Mouse Island. Mouse Island's national anthem. A thousand voices squeak as one. A thousand tails proudly wag. A thousand whiskers boldly quiver. A thousand paws raise your yellow flag. Under our fur, a thousand hearts beat for you. Sweet, sweet Mouse Island. When the anthem was over, I raised my arms and waved to all of my fans. From across the podium, Shorty Tayo flashed me the thumbs up sign. Grinning proudly, I returned it. Then I went to find my family. My little nephew Benjamin jumped up to hug me. Uncle Geronimo, you are the best. I knew you could do it. You are totally awesome. My sister winked at me. I'm so proud of you, Jerry Berry. Trap slapped me on the back. I braced myself for a mocking comment. Teasing me is my cousin's favorite hobby. I've got to tell you, Germster, you did well, he said. That flying kick was masterful. I had no idea you were so athletic. I threw my paws around all three of them. Winning the tournament was wonderful. Of course, but winning my family's pride is way more important. It's great to share your happiness with rodents who you love. I was one lucky mouse. At that moment, nothing could take away my happiness. At least that's what I thought. I'm a very private rodent. At that moment, two of the tournament's officials approached me. They both had serious looks on their snouts. Mr. Stilton, please come this way. I was puzzled right now. I asked, where are we going and why? To the medical clinic, the first officer replied. We must, we must go at once. We have to test you to make sure you didn't cheat. 
But, but why me? I asked. It's nothing personal, the second official exclaimed. All contestants must submit to the test. So I said a quick goodbye to my family and followed the officials. I was worried, even though I knew I hadn't done anything wrong. When I got to the clinic, a stern-looking nurse poured me a plastic container. Here you go, he said. You know what to do. But I didn't. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. You have to urinate, he said patiently. Then we will test it to see if you cheated. Of course, I knew I hadn't cheated, but I still felt a little ashamed of having to take a test to prove it. Especially now that I knew I had to pee into a little cup. It was embarrassing. I'm a very private rodent. I didn't think things could get worse. But they did. I suddenly just started towards the bathroom. When suddenly I heard the nurse's voice behind me. Sorry, Mr. Hilton. But you can't go alone. One of the officials from the tournament will have to stand guard the outside door. I was so surprised. I almost tripped over my own tail. What? I'll never be able to go if there's a stranger right outside. I answered desperately. The nurse smiled kindly at me. I'm so sorry, Mr. Stilton. I know it's terrible that a few cheaters had made these rules necessary. But these are the rules. If you don't follow them, we will have no choice but to disqualify you. I knew what I had to do. The honesty of my entire team was at stake. If I needed to pee in a cup to prove my integrity, I would do it. Bye, chief. So I headed to the bathroom, and an official followed me. He looked almost as embarrassed as I was. Um, could I have something to drink? I mumbled. A little water might help me. Without a squeak, he poured me a bottle of water. I drank it in one gulp, but it didn't help. They brought me another bottle. I drank that one down even faster than the first. But nothing happened. So I drank another, then another, and another. But still nothing. The official and the nurse were starting to look at me a little suspiciously. Finally, the official said, Mr. Silton, if there is something you want to tell us, he trailed off. The nurse nodded. It would save everybody time and water if you'd confess. What? I cried. No, I have nothing to confess. I'm just a little self-conscious, that's all. The official gave me a sympathetic look. We understand, Mr. Stilton, but we have other athletes we must test. You really have to hurry up. I gulped. I tried to concentrate. I drank yet another bottle of water and suddenly I really had to go. I scampered into the stall and did my business. When I was done, I was so relieved. I gave the nurse my biggest smile as I poured him my plastic container. He began my test at once. I sat down to it. Another athlete came in. I recognized him immediately. It was Butch Strongmouth, the biggest and most muscular athlete. He looked worried. Shorty Tayo came in next. She seemed cheerful. Hiya, Geronimo, she said, waving to me. She went into the ladies' room with a female official and came out with her container a few minutes later. She sat down next to me to wait. After about 15 minutes, the nurse gave us the results. 
Geronimo stood him. Your test is negative, then I said. You may go. I smiled. I knew my test had been fine, of course. But I hadn't realised until that moment how tense I had been. The nurse consulted his list. Shorty Tyre, you're clean, but Butch Strongmouth. I'm sorry to say that your test was positive. You're disqualified. Butch burst out crying. Wow. My trainer told me I should take something to make me stronger. <laughs> but he said they were almost the same as vitamins. I didn't want to. But he told me it was the only way I could win. Shorty patted Butch on the back. Your trainer was wrong. That stuff is illegal and it can be very dangerous to your health. Plus, it goes against the true spirit of karate. If you had won the championship, what satisfaction would you have? Butch, you can't ever win by cheating. Butch just cried harder. You're right, he blubbered. I was an idiot. No, you're not an idiot, I told him. You just made a mistake. But remember, there's always next time. That's right, said Shorty. Keep on training. And I bet you'll do well next time without using anything you shouldn't. At that, Butch dried his eyes. You're right, he shouted. I promise I'll never do it again. I'll respect myself and the true spirit of karate. Thank you, my friends. Shorty, Tyre and I hugged Butch. Then we left the clinic together. As we headed towards the bus, Bruce approached us. Uh-oh. He probably had another embarrassing trip up his sleeve. I looked around, but there was no place to hide. So I sealed myself. Imagine my surprise when he hugged me. Well done, she said. Bruce said, I am really proud of you. That's Bruce for you. He might be embarrassing sometimes. Sayonara. That night there was a party for all the karate competitors. It was called the Sayonara party. Sayonara means goodbye in Japanese. All my new teammates were there, plus Shorty, Miga, and Daniela, Sensei Yamamouse, Bruce, and even my family. It was so much fun. Many of the mice spoke different languages, but we understood one another anyway. We were living proof that sports unite everyone. At the end of the party, we said our goodbyes with tears in our eyes we promise to keep in touch an interesting idea the next day we took a plane back to new mouth city when we landed we had a big surprise the mayor was there to greet us there was a parade in our honor Everyone was there to celebrate. Sensei Yamamouse, Daniela, Miga, Shorty, and Bruce. I hugged my teammates with pride. Finally, it was time to turn to the Rodents Gazette. I was sure to be in a tail deep in work after a week off. When I got in, I discovered the staff were was all waiting for me. As soon as I scurried into the door, wearing my championship medal, they burst into applause. Even Shorty Ty was there. She had brought her little brother, Baby Ty, who was already promising to be a karate champion. After the festives were over, Shorty slided over to me. Geronimo, I have an interesting idea for you. Destination 
Okinawa. Want to know what? Shorty squeaked. She asked me to take another trip with her and Bruce Hyena. Destination? Okinawa, Japan. That's right. Okinawa. The island where karate was born. I was so thrilled to learn more about this ancient martial art that I accepted. Now, you know I don't like to travel. But I was so excited, I hardly noticed how many hours we were on the plane. And believe me, it was a lot of hours. Shorty told told me many stories about her childhood, including tales about how she started to learn karate and how karate had helped her in many situations. Thanks to karate, she had become stronger, determined mouse. Karate had helped her reach many of her goals. As I listened to Shorty, I realized that karate all had also helped me. The concentration I learned assisted me with my fears and shyness. Thanks to karate, I had learned that a mouse can do anything he or she wants, as long as he or she is willing to work at it. Once we reached Okinawa, we had our work cut for us. Photos from our trip. Geronimo in samurai armor. Geronimo with a paw cramp. Ouch! Geronimo learns to write in Japanese. The dojo. Brucey, Shorty, Tai. Shorty and Geronimo in Kim Ono's tea ceremony. Too hot. hot. We were determined to discover the origins of karate and learn as much as we could about Japanese culture. It was the perfect project for a book mouse like me. I was so excited. Could I do it? Would I be able to learn the ancient rules of the samurai? That, dear rodents, is a story for another book. But I will tell you about it someday. I will give you my word. The word of Geronimo Stilton. And that's the end of this read aloud. Geronimo Stilton, the Karate Mouse. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next book. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good day.